You're listening to Black Parents Aging, where we help you navigate caring for aging loved ones. Every Wednesday, we'll discuss how to help your parents successfully navigate this new season of life. We are going to talk about legal, health, technology, and finances. Here's your host attorneys, Olivia Smith and Nicola Robinson. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Black Parents Aging. I am your host, Nicola Robinson. I am so delighted that you guys decided to join me for yet another episode. I do not take it lightly that you find time in your schedule to tune in and get these nuggets and gems of information that hopefully you can pass on to your parents or your grandparents or any other aging relative that you care greatly about. The whole goal of the show is to really be able to give you information, to really equip you so that you can help those that you care about as they are already dealing with the new era of life, a new season in terms of aging and health and finances and everything. It just looks very different as we age. So I hope that this podcast has been a blessing to all of our listeners. I cannot believe we are already in episode 23. I feel like we just started, but we have so much more we want to share with you guys. So I hope you keep tuning in and I hope you keep getting these nuggets of information. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about a family meeting. And the idea for this episode really came to me in our law practice this week because I've had to meet with so many sibling sets. They've just been dealing with trying to navigate their parents' stuff. And it's often interesting when I do consultations with siblings, who is going to have all the information, who's going to be the sibling that's the ultimate decision maker, seeing how that dynamic works. is always just, it's always gives me pause because I have a sibling and our personalities can be so different sometimes. So I wanted to take the time to talk about a family meeting and just kind of why it's important and why as siblings, we kind of need to have that meeting much earlier than before our parents actually get sick. Like, once we start seeing the signs of our parents slowing down or maybe looking like they need help, that's the perfect time to have that meeting with your siblings. And I know a lot of times some of us, we don't see our siblings that regularly. Like maybe we do talk to them occasionally on the phone, maybe a couple of times a week or whatever, but we don't get together as much because, you know, everybody's busy or they live in different states. And I know with COVID this past year, it's been over a year since I've seen my sister. Yeah, I've seen her on Zoom a million times, but getting together has been very difficult. She's in New York and I'm here in Georgia. So that shutdown has really kept us apart. But I challenge everyone when the world does open back up to call a family meeting, call up your siblings and say, hey, I would love to sit down and talk to you guys and let's have a conversation about mom and dad and set that agenda so everybody knows what the meeting is is going to be about so that people aren't sidetracked. You know, they're not thrown off guard when you want to talk about the future of your parents and they're not thinking this is more of a social event. And I want you to also just have your siblings there. This is not a meeting to bring the spouses or to bring cousins or some other family members. Just have a meeting of the siblings. Maybe have a moderator, somebody that's a neutral, that is not invested in the outcome of the meeting, but can help everyone really get their voice heard and make sure that everybody is sticking to the agenda. Somebody that can really just step in there, especially if emotions get high during the meeting and somebody that can kind of bring everybody back down and bring them back to what the ultimate purpose of the meeting is. And, and I hope when you set a family meeting that the purpose is coming from a place of love. We want to make sure that we're always working from what is the best thing that we can do to help our parents or our grandparents as they're aging and how can we be a value and a resource to them and help them in that space. So getting a moderator, a nice neutral third party who's not related 
maybe a clergy person from your church or a hospice or even a lawyer. Like I'll be point blank. We've we've had to do some family meetings over the years and it helps because sometimes the lawyers have just a wealth of information that the family may not even be thinking about from the legal and the financial side of things. So once you kind of figure out who's coming to the meeting, who's going to be the facilitator, who's going to really be the person to set up the meeting, who's going to set the agenda, who's going to make sure they share that agenda with everyone. And then y'all probably need to put together some guidelines before the meeting so people know clearly what to expect. And so one thing you want to maybe consider is having a guideline around how long everyone can talk. So you'll say, you know, maybe you have a sibling that you know is good for dominating conversations and this is not really the place for that. So you may want to say everybody can only speak for 10 minutes or have the moderators cut everybody off, give a timer. Maybe one of the guidelines is no interrupting when it's somebody else's turn to speak so that we can make sure that everybody's voice is heard and everybody is able to express how they're feeling when it comes to mom and dad aging and mom and dad's finances or even the idea of having to someday place mom and dad in some type of a facility or um, nursing home. And make sure that in the guidelines, you also tell everyone to work with I statements, say how I feel, or this is my opinion, instead of pointing blame and trying to say, well, you did this or you did that. Take that out of it. Make sure you're all working from a place of I and a place of of your own feelings about certain things. And you may want to also just really always come back to the agenda and the reason behind the meeting. So people are never, you know, going off on old arguments and start talking about stuff from childhood. And, you know, we get, it's so easy to get emotional and it's so easy to be reminded of things you may have done uh, when you were less mature. I mean, let's be honest. We all weren't adults. We did some stupid stuff when we were younger. And so we want to make sure that we stay on track and we stay with the meeting's agenda and we're not rehashing old debates and going down the rabbit hole of some stuff that y'all did when you was like 18 and won't nobody let you live down. So keep that in mind. And then at the family meeting, Make sure you guys know exactly what it is you're there to discuss. I mean, of course you with your siblings, so it's going to be a good time. And you might want to just bring up stuff and old stuff and laugh and joke and all that other stuff. But there is a reason for this meeting. So you want to discuss who's going to take care of mom and dad, who's going to deal with the medical side of things, who's going to deal with the financial side of things, who's going to handle the day-to-day in terms of if they need any actual help with the day-to-day, who's you know going to be responsible for touring a nursing home or touring a facility if that comes down to it, who's going to cut the grass, who's going to pay the bills, like have a true clear-cut agenda with these types of topics. And don't think that you're going to be able to hit on all these topics in just one meeting. So even plan that into the meeting. Say, listen, there's only going to be a few things that we can get to. So let's prioritize one or two of these things for this meeting. And sometimes, you know, emotions are going to get high. Like that's also to be expected. So maybe you need a cooling off period. So you want to keep the meetings short and say, okay, We agree to kind of reconvene and look at this. Uh, Maybe some of the meetings you're going to need more research. And so have a person that's going to be the one to take up the charge. Ask for volunteers. Always ask to see what your siblings have the bandwidth to do. Some people might say, well, I live out of state and feel like, well, I can't really do much. But there's a whole host of things that you can do when you live out of state. You can still pay bills online. You can make regular phone calls to your parents. You can, you know, research agencies or research facilities on the computer so you don't have to be in the same state. Sometimes a lot of paperwork just needs to be downloaded, printed out, and actually filled out. So there are those things that you can do. Even if you have a sibling that's out of state, you can assign them those types of tasks. And then you want to see the siblings who have the bandwidth or who are in town, maybe those are the ones that start looking at 
you know, transportation for your parents to and from the doctor? Who's going to be the one to talk to the lawyers? Who's going to be the ones to go and talk to, say, geriatric care managers and really do the research for that? So assign everyone a task and a role so that everyone is feeling like they're a part the actual care and day-to-day in terms of mom and dad. And then you might want to also just really figure out who is going to be almost a family spokesperson. I think that's key because for those people who live out of state, they're feeling like they may not be, you know, privy to all of the information because they're not in the day-to-day. But if you have that one person who is going to be kind of the point person, the advocate, that's the person that everybody can check in with who is going to be responsible for relaying information to all of the family members. That way, even with the medical professionals, they know who to expect. They know who they are going to be primarily dealing with. And you may have multiple spokespeople. You might have the spokesperson who's dealing with all the medical stuff, or you may have the spokesperson that's dealing with all the financial stuff. If it needs to be, you know, divided between multiple siblings, it can certainly be divided that way. So just have a conversation to see what everybody's strengths are, what their bandwidth is, what responsibilities they already have. And then what needs to be done. Come to the meeting with a list of action items. Here's the things that mom and dad are dealing with. Here are the things that we need to all pitch in and help out in some way. So that is a family meeting for you guys in a nutshell. But this one was really on my heart because I have met so many sisters and brothers trying to navigate this space this week. And some clearly were that that advocate and that champion. They had the files with all the information and knew where things were. And then there was the other siblings who came to the meeting who were just like, I rely on my sister, I rely on my brother, and really didn't have a whole lot of information. So I thought maybe we would just talk about that and see what other people are doing and give some tips on it. And so that is really all I have for you guys. Just Keep the line of communication open with your siblings. You know, it was so easy when we were little because we all lived in the same house. (laughs) But now we're all busy and we have our own lives. But we all, again, want the best for our parents. And I think the earlier we start having these conversations so that everybody can be on the same page. And sometimes, you know, we see something, especially if you're the sibling that's home with mom and dad or live in the same state and visit them pretty regularly, you might start picking up on stuff or seeing stuff that your siblings are not seeing because they don't come home, but maybe once or twice a year. And so if you all start having these conversations and you can start sharing what you're observing with them, it doesn't come as such as a surprise and it doesn't come like a shock when you bring up stuff or suggest that maybe mom and dad need some type of caregiver or need to start looking at a facility. So definitely start with those Just start having the conversation, start keeping the lines of communication open, invite your siblings to be, you know, in on everything so that they know and they don't feel like one person is really dominating the whole situation or feeling voiceless about what's going on. So that is what I have for you guys. I hope this was helpful. Please, please, please share, share with your friends or colleagues or whoever you know that might be dealing with this right now. Because like I said, we last two weeks, I mean, I've met with so many sibling sets. So I know personally, it's a lot of siblings that are out here dealing with trying to navigate taking care of their parents. So I hope this was helpful. You can always reach out if you have questions or other topics you want to hear on the top podcast, or it's just, you know, something that's been on your heart. Please share with us. You can find us on our Facebook page. It's always links in the show notes on how you can reach us. All right, guys, until next time. You're listening to Black Parents Aging, where we help you navigate caring for aging loved ones. Every Wednesday, we'll discuss how to help your parents successfully navigate this new season of life. We are going to talk about legal, health, technology, and finances. Here's your host attorneys, Olivia Smith and Nicola Robinson.